Okay, everyone, for some reason, there's some lag between what I'm streaming to you and what you guys are all seeing. I don't really know why that is, but I do apologize for that. I just want to let you know that we're going to be doing some painting here. I actually started a little bit, and I thought, oh, you know, I don't want to wait. I just want to get this done and paint. And I was like, I don't want to just be here by myself. That's crazy, right? I get a webcam, I get a computer, I get all this kind of stuff. I'm recording through my Apple earbuds mic. I know, you think like, why doesn't he use this, right? But like, the purpose is to paint. And I just thought I would do this and thought, hey, all of you can be with me on this journey. As you can tell, I'm not really in my video mode, but I just, I wanted to get some painting done. So I got my, here we go, Everlasting Wet Palette here. I got my Citadel paint pot. I got some paint that I picked up at the Hobby Bunker Game Day. So we got right here. This is Vallejo Panzer Series Flat Earth. Right here, 70.983, number 143 paint. I also picked up um, for a lighter color, I'll pull the dry brush on, Citadel Dry Brush and Paint, right? Right here, Sylvanet Bark. And then I had already one of the Citadel washes right here, Devlin Mud, that I'll use. So I had done a video, you guys probably saw, where I primed these pieces online um, and got those all done. And actually, when I, I'm going to show you stuff, I'll just use the blue here. Uh, make it a little easier for you guys to see, so it won't focus on me so much. So the next piece is, um, feel free to comment in the chat or anything, because I'd love to know what you guys are thinking, what you want to see, uh, anything. That, but that, just tell me about your day, heck. That kind of stuff. So here's another one that I primed. You can see they're actually really nicely done. And so I just thought I'd start painting them. So I'm going to base coat them. You can see I've done a little bit of base coating right here, right? I'm going to base coat them with the flat earth paint right here and so all I did was I used the everlasting wet palette got some water in it and I used one of their paint swats and they actually intend this for washes but I got some paint in there and uh, this is a pretty thick paint actually then I got some right on my wet palette so I just got a little going and feel free to do a project with me as I'm doing this Let's see what's going on, uh, see how people's days are going. And if this is something that you guys like to do, or you want to be a more common thing, maybe we can get some painting done this way. So, as I put the computer and the lights right in the exact same spot, that wasn't exactly a smart move. Here we go. Let a little more light get over here, maybe. Let's just start painting and see how things going. I don't know about you, but I had a busy Monday at work. There's a lot going on, and it's nice to just kind of relax, right? Uh, and you can do some painting, you can do all sorts of stuff to relax and uh, just get things going on. You might be thinking, wait a sec, isn't this where Jonathan normally um, has his cigar box battle mat? And that's true, uh, but obviously I moved it because I don't want to get paint on it. So I just actually have some green felt down. You can see a little over here, right? And we get that going, and um, move the cigar box battlement out of the way. We'll get some nice paint going on here. Get some nice brown going. And I think I want to leave some black showing through for the base coat, right? Because I think that'll help give it a little depth for things. And then, like rocks, like this one right here. You might be not be able to see so well. So a rock like that, I think I'll pick out after the fact. See that right in front staring at you guys? I'll pick out and make a separate color, I think, as well. So let's just, since the base coat, I don't have to be neat about it. Just let's get some paint all over this thing. And that way we can move on to the next one. And get stuff going on and I'm really curious what all of you are working on what you have planned how your weeks are going and things of that sort and I know some other groups do like paint and chats and things of that ilk and that can be a lot of fun here actually 
you could plan a day for the week maybe make it a floating day and just get some painting done it doesn't have to be high quality video but we can actually set it up as like a youtube live thing right where we all have a chance to talk to one another and interact and just see what's going on with everyone kind of a cool thing that happens uh, a facebook group the tabletop commanders do it actually i believe um they're pissed in another time zone though so that's always ends up being a problem for me for trying to interact with that and i have to say painting a train piece like this is far more desirable to me than painting a model uh, and i know in the past i've said that i don't really like to paint models or uh i'll paint them but i like to do singles and that's also true but like a train piece like this is actually kind of a lot of fun and not only because it's just a train piece but also because you can use it for different things here let's turn around so you guys can see a little bit more of where i'm painting i can get another angle on some of the stuff that i already did so you can kind of do that um and it's going to be a little ironic i think because one of the things that I had um, recently backed, I talked about it on the show, was that I was a backer for the Dwarven Forge Caverns Deep. And when I did that, I made sure to back it for painting because I was like, I'm not going to want to paint the stuff. And like a cavern, you think, wouldn't be that bad to paint, right? And that's probably true. Except there's just too much variation in color and everything. For, if I'm going to have to knock out a, a lot of pieces, I'm not going to want to have to deal with all that. Uh, whereas if it was actually like a dungeon and just dungeon gray, I could do that easily. That wouldn't be a problem. Something that could get done in no time and be pretty speedy about it, have a good time doing it, and just get it done. But I was like, I got to make sure that I back it at a painted level. You know, that means I would get fewer pieces than if I just chose to do it at an unpainted level. But sometimes that's just what one does, right? You go with what you can get, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that at all. There's really not. Um, let me get this going. Now, their website, actually, uh, over here at Ironclad Miniatures shows a really nice paint job of these and what it does it shows that these are kind of the ground is kind of like a light colored earth with the little rocks and stuff picked out in a lighter tone and then the sandbags obviously are more sandy color i'm still going to base coat them with this brown and get it going that way and then i can do whatever i need ideally i probably would have done a khaki or something of that sort but this is just what we're going to do um because it's the paint i have on hand and I just want to get things done. I mean, I enjoy painting when I paint. It can be relaxing, but I also get frustrated when there's too many little details and, like, all that cleanup stuff. That's why I can never be, like, a pro painter. Besides the fact that I don't have the skill, but I can never be a pro painter like uh, a Jack Sarge, for example. You guys should check out his stuff. He posts in our fan group a fair bit, and he shares things that he's painting and that he's working on. Uh, and he's really talented, worth every penny that you can afford to spend on him. He's down under, and uh, use the conversion rates. <laughs> uh, the Australian dollar, I think, is like one Australian dollar to every like one and a half American or something like that. So you should be able to do pretty decently if you're in the U.S. And even in England, maybe, with Brexit, um, it still might not be too bad. Uh, I don't know. Terribly, I'm not a professional or expert when it comes to Brexit. I don't claim to be. So I don't talk about it one way or the other. And, and I'm not making any comments and saying whether it's a good or a bad thing. I'll leave that up to you to decide. Because here at Wargaming Recon, we try to steer clear of politics and a few other things. Religion and sports, generally. I've learned over the years it's wise because you're always going to upset someone. And yes, I know it's true that you could say that about the hobby as well, about rules or whatever, but as much fun as the hobby brings us, right, and I hope it brings us a lot of fun, I think you're less likely to have people be very upset and not want to be friends with you, or have a negative impact on your home or work life, 
if you say something controversial about the hobby, then if you say something about politics or religion or sports even to some degree, and uh, we just don't need that stuff. There should be a safe space for everyone, regardless of what you like and what you believe. So I feel it's important to keep it that way. I need to add a little bit more of that. Flat Earth, so let's shake it. And I got right here, I'm just going to put it right back in the same spot because I'm going through some. But with the eyedropper, it's great. You can actually control how much. And you actually see as I'm doing it, look, I'm getting a stream. It's because it's thick paint. And you could water it down a little bit. You could put a dab of water in there and be good. But with the wet palette, it just kind of helps let it flow. So yeah, just getting it going really good there for a nice flow. You could do a few coats on this base. Like I said, I don't want all that black to be lost. Because I really want it to be like an area that maybe the, the ground is a little fresher. This is a piece that doesn't have any wood inside. So clearly they haven't been there as long as, say, whoever dug this gun emplacement. Because they spent the time to actually cut wood and fortify it. And look, you even got nice corners. Actually, here's a better one. So you can see you get nice corners here where they actually did some woodworking. This one man um, spot is kind of like this. It's probably hastily dug, just trying to get out, maybe battle the bulge or something like that. But this is like fresh dirt, so I, I still want it to look like you can see some brown that had come up that maybe it's not all like you know dark um, brown dirt or whatever. Um, just kind of something that is uh what i'm gonna do with my aesthetic but you can do it any way you want uh people who listen to the show might know that i'm a huge fan of bob ross you know i painted myself into a corner <laughs> i was like i'm gonna do them inside and then it didn't so bob ross is always one let's say it's your world right put a happy tree wherever you want it you can paint it however you like there's no wrong ways there's no mistakes just happy little accidents and I think it's true with many types of painting not a lot uh, obviously if you're doing historicals for example and you're trying to depict a particular army at a particular time and place you should be pretty accurate about all that right but uh, you also don't need to be a, a rivet counter either because nobody likes that right now, these sandbags, I'm not going to get perfect on the first go. Let me just kind of do a little coverage, and then I'll come back with another coat. Because I just, I don't want brush strokes, which is what I'm getting right now. And then I could do this, I could just take a glob of paint, right? And just go all over it. But then that looks awful. It's going to be too thick, too terrible. So we'll just go over here, get some of it off. And then we just kind of bend it down, and then I can rub that excess over other areas. And then I'll come back to the and do those in a little bit more. And if I lose any of this dark brown area, that I uh, black area rather that I want to keep, I could instead of using my Devlin mud wash, I could I have a badab black one so just a black wash that would give it a little more shadowing um in there to help the light stand out a little bit more because as bob ross had to say in order to have the light the highlights stand out you need to have the dark so this one except for the inside is basically done so let's move on to the next piece and i know i'm not going to get these all done tonight but i would like to make some headway and i could have just cut and run with the first one like okay that's the video but we'll do a little bit more here i don't want to keep you guys forever uh, I mean, if you're interacting in the chat room please do and we can talk as we paint and hang out and have fun and then maybe i'll go a little bit longer but otherwise i'll paint for a while and show you guys what i'm doing here they say no one likes to watch paint dry but apparently some people do maybe and and after that I can cut the feed and I'll just finish this up on my own as need be. But it goes pretty easily. Uh, I will say when I picked up the paints 
was at the Hobby Bunker game day this past weekend with Adrian, who you know from the show. He comes on every so often. He's one of my good friends. I'm actually going to be seeing him on Wednesday night. His daughter's running another session of Dungeon World uh, role-playing game for us to play in. And Alex is supposed to be there too, I believe. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, but when I was picking up stuff, Adrian was like, well, if you're just doing terrain, right, why are you buying expensive hobby paint? Why not just go to, like, a craft store like a Michael's or AC Moore or Hobby Lobby or something like that and just get some, like, paint from them, right, that you don't need to worry about it being expensive because you're going to go through a lot. And it's like, well, no, not really. I mean, I'm not painting a whole table or anything. These are just a few pieces. And to me, it's no different than when you base stuff, right? You're going to do some basing. You can get the nice Woodland Scenics pieces and go... Uh, I mean, you can always just go in your yard and pick up twigs and stuff, but... Um, I was like, no, this will be fine. I'm not going to go through a lot of it. And honestly, with the amount of painting I do, this paint will last me forever. And the great thing about the Vallejo line of paints is with their eyedroppers, they really will last forever. It's not going to dry out. The GW stuff, they're going to be a little more worrisome about. Uh, so... There's that. This is an old brush. Brush I got a low cornel brush right here. And it's from, um... I feel like I picked it up at AC Moore. It's a 3,000 round. It's nothing special, but it's a more expensive brush from them. I know you can get even more expensive brush, but this is, I think, a sable hair brush. I've had it for ages. And um, I go there to get brushes instead of buying hobby brushes. Although, I actually do have a base coating brush right here from Army Painter that I picked up because I was like, oh, the bristles look really nice. And it's been in here forever. And there it is. Now since I know I'm not going to finish everything tonight, I could just use this wet palette and keep the paint in there for a couple days and see how it goes. Because I've already done my longevity tests. I had the wet palette, so the wet palette episode going with paint and water in them for about three weeks, three and a half weeks to see what's happened. Would I get mold? Would I get whatever? And um, So I've done that part of the testing, which is why I'm using this again. It's a different color than things were when um, you guys probably saw it before. And you might be thinking, whoa, what happened to all the other paint? You can actually see some remnants in it over there. But, uh, so that's what happened with that. But I think I will... Uh, just use it to stir the paint in that I need to. And I learned my lesson with the other one. I'm doing the inside while I can. With the other one, I was like, I'm not going to do the inside right away because I'm going to need that to help hold it. Um, I can actually hold it like this, too, to get some of the inside until I get to that spot. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's the inside, right? So that's where the model's going to be. You figure game standard painting is what we aim for, right? It's not a show piece. I mean, it could be, I guess. Something like this is a piece maybe you might want to spend a little more time on. But realistically, people are going to be looking at it two to three feet away. Think about tiny things you might look at from two to three feet away. If you're working with dad like me, think about like trying to find one of your kids' small toys, right? And you're standing all the way up. And then they're like, Daddy, Daddy, I want my whatever. Can you pick it up for me? And you look at the floor and you're trying to figure out from the sea of toys what that thing is. And that's slightly more than two to three feet away. But that gives you a general idea. Can you see what they want? Really? Just can you? And then use that as a general example for your painting standards. It's a tad extreme, I know. But again, it gives you the idea of what I'm talking about. Let me just keep doing some painting. Um, I figure as time moves on and as this becomes a more common thing, that's what palette is. Turn it a little bit. Uh, well, at least not diluting it as much as I'm used to. Uh, but as time goes on, if this becomes a more common thing, 
then maybe more of you will pop in to the chat during the live stream and we can all kind of participate and do this sort of stuff it'll be a lot of fun I think to make it happen let's just take a peek in the chat see if anyone's in there you know, not at the moment but if you are feel free to leave a comment a like thumbs up whatever okay so at this point we're gonna flop you around and you guys are gonna get a boring view while I try to do the inside You just keep on painting and painting. I actually owe a video to Current Sari Publishers for the Great War Gaming Survey, which ends soon. They asked if I would do it, and I said I would try to add that into my schedule. And I'm doing this instead. Uh, I feel bad about it. As much as I want to do that, I want to help them because they're wonderful people. They've been great to have on the show and great for the show. Uh, very nice gentleman John over at Ironclad Miniatures that sent these a little while ago and said that we would add them to the queue for review proud of reviewing means painting them and I owe it to him to all of you to get this painting done okay let's pick these up and get a little bit of light so I can see on the inside here so these have a nice heft to them actually, speaking of the pieces, they're sturdy, they don't feel like they're going to crumble or break apart or anything like that. I know some people might worry, you get a piece of resin like this, you're like, oh, what's it going to do? I believe this is resin, um, but I don't really have to worry about that. They're very nice, the detail's really good. Yeah. They take paint pretty well, they're pretty straightforward and easy to prime and I mean I did that in that hot day video when I busted up my legs on my <laughs> driveway pavement I'm a big guy as you can probably tell and all that weight on my knees and my shins and stuff just ground the pebbles and everything into me it was not a smart thing to do but honestly I wanted to get the footage for you and I was like it's now or never so, I did it, and it's over. Uh, and that actually would be a great topic for a show. What is your most painful wargaming um, injury? If you've ever seen a Kevin, any Kevin Smith movies, you might be familiar with the famous scene from Chasing Amy, where they trade um, stories of injuries from being intimate with other people, and... Excuse me for coughing. And that just kind of got a lot of play. But it makes me wonder what war gamers' injuries would be like if they shared stories of painting and modeling and gaming and all of that sort. I actually have one that I'll share. And if I ever do a podcast episode about it, I'll share it again on the podcast. But I once dremeled through this thumb right here, right here through the side, and tore a chunk out. So I was trying to do a pin vice thing for the first time in my life. I thought, oh, I'm going to pin vice. It was some GW model. I was trying to do a metal thing. I was like, I'm going to do it. And part of doing it, I've got to drill into the model. Right? So that I can actually get the, the paper clip or whatever I was using in properly. And then I could get things going so it would be nice and sturdy. And all that kind of stuff. And I had gotten a Dremel for Christmas a year or two before, but I hadn't really used it a lot because I tend to be a little gun shy, as it were, about that kind of stuff. Michael Jones once poked fun at me that I need to use kitty scissors when I cut stuff, and I'm a bit of a klutz, <laughs> so it's not completely unmerited. Uh, and uh, they don't make kitty Dremels, so, and I told him the story too, actually. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna go, and I was at my parents' place, I was still living at home, so I held the model, and I'm dremeling with the other one and it slips off the model of course goes right through my thumb hurt like all get out blood coming out and everything and I was calm normally I would freak out about that kind of stuff but I was really calm and everything and that was just really crazy and looking back at it it's really nuts because I have quite a needle phobia 
and yet like I didn't freak out about that so that was quite interesting but after that I was like I'm not pin vicing anything anymore and I know a lot of people use hand pin vices um <laughs> it's just it's terrible we got um Dave B friend of the show wonderful gentleman in the chat right now and he's saying I sent a cavalry charge pike man physical uh, injury I think I fouled my nail by accident I really paint minis Dave I don't blame you doing that that would hurt uh, way back again GW the chaos warriors uh, guys they had long like lances and the metal was so pointy I used to end up getting all these really bad indentations and I drew blood a few times just from playing and like you pick them up and next thing you know you'd be like ah and you go right through and people never think of that kind of stuff but there's all sorts of injuries you can get just from assembling stuff and, and everything and playing people always think of like a knife right like if you're using a hobby knife and you're cutting things or um i mean let's face it let's say you're doing a role-playing game because uh, dave i know you're a big uh role player actually you're creating your own rules i believe or at least a module if i'm correct for a game because i know you made some progress on that good job on you by the way and uh, if you're doing that kind of stuff, you might just be doing like physical cutting and pasting kind of stuff. And you could hurt yourself with scissors. <laughs> this is going to sound dumb. Like a paper cut. Paper cuts hurt. They hurt a lot. It's really crazy. And um, we might not realize this is an injury, but like this paint, I'm probably giving myself cancer. I'm not saying I'm literally. Uh, don't go call it the paint manufacturer, but like. I was watching this video on Facebook of this guy, I don't remember his name, but he said your paint was giving him cancer, so I think it's giving me cancer too, and I'm going to sue you for all your money. Don't do that, because we don't know. But I'll tell you one hobby thing that, at least in the state of California, is claimed or known to give you cancer, is Zip Kicker. So any of you minis guys, or gals, because there's some great minis gals out there, know... That zip kicker is this cool accelerant for super glue. You put your super glue on your model, spray a little zip kicker, and like hold it together, and it like cures almost instantly. But it says on the container that you got to be careful using it because in the state of California, it, it may cause cancer. So my friends and I used to joke that like, yeah, that's dangerous and we shouldn't use it. And, you know, you could use it in a well ventilated area, and all the appropriate safety concerns don't not do that make sure you follow all that safety stuff um but we used to joke like you know we'd get cancer from that but only if we were in the state of california anywhere else it was fine in the world and obviously that's not true california must be on to something but like all this stuff is like really dangerous and we never think of it i mean living's dangerous right but it's just kind of funny uh how all that stuff goes and you don't often think about it um so, like, you can get things like that as well as being um, a way that can give you an injury, but, like, a dice ever fly out and be in the eye and you get a black eye or something. I would really love to know what your war stories are and not, like, this is how your game went, but, like, <laughs> that you're, like, you're, like, physical injuries. You got it. Did someone beat you in a game so hard that you were emotionally damaged for a while? Um, make a really stupid mistake or something. Not to, you know, be like, ha-ha, because we're not about that here. But just to try to see what kind of stuff goes on. I think it's quite interesting. It's a thing people don't often talk about. But it would be quite fascinating to learn. We could probably do a whole episode on that. Yeah. So the paint on this side is mostly dry, so we can move that over. And then this one, the paint is mostly dry. So for a little that I got it myself. So I'm just going to do a few little touch-ups on it. And I think at this point, for those of you still watching, I might cut the feed and finish things up on my own. And then you'll be able to see on social media, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, some pictures of things that have been done with this just for how it's gonna go mm -hmm. that could be pretty cool so we'll finish that up after and I would just like to take a moment to thank all of you <laughs> we can turn you a little more towards me right 
Thank you for joining me for this paint and chat session. We'll do it again. If you didn't watch it live, leave a comment below, right? And maybe I'll take this and I'll actually put it on YouTube. But leave a comment below. Like the video if you thought it was interesting. Of course, it could be more interesting if we have some back and forth with all of you. I'd love for you, all of you to join in if we can. So remember, leave a comment below. Even if you don't see it live, say what you would like to do. Tell me what a good time is um, that would work for you. And we'll try to accommodate as many of you as we can as possible. And we'll do this again. So as always, you know the drill. Keep on gaming.